So this is chapter five, okay? Denial of service attacks, okay? And in this chapter, we will study different type of attacks, which is based on network mainly. And uh, before going to the chapter five, we will okay, discuss a little bit about what kind of attack it is and what kind of scenario that happens inside such kind of attacks. So I'm giving an example of a very relativistic okay, network, very simple network. Okay. So it, this is a scenario of the network usually we find everywhere in real world. And we will study DOS hacks with this scenario. So the thing is, okay, Uh, let's say we have uh, several companies, okay, corporates. The corporate, which is a big in size, large company. Another corporate is a small one, medium size corporate company. And they have their internal network, which is called local area network, which is uh, connecting together the clients inside the companies, okay, the users inside the companies and the main server of the company together with. And uh, this creates a complete network that is called local area network of the corporate. In the same way, uh, the same scenario is here, okay? We have different clients, users, and they are connected to this, their servers inside their local networks. And also, they need to run the business, so they connect with the internet, the big network. And at the same time, okay, they get access to the service providers, okay, ISP, internet service providers, the companies that provide internet to them. So ISP is like, a, maybe you can think about mobile, STC or other companies. So they have also their own network, okay, that's okay, no problem. The client, the user and the uh, ISP service provider servers, okay, all these things. Uh, in the same way, we have another okay, ISPs itself, okay, that's okay. So uh, the thing is, okay, the attacker is somewhere in the middle of the network internet, okay, and he is trying to access some of the data of the company, maybe from the small company or the big one, that's okay, but he's always trying to find uh, some means in the network. So, okay, all right. so he is trying to get access to this network always to get the server. And uh, this is done by connecting together with the ISP, okay, broadband uh, users, uh, ISP service providers, and at the same time, it is trying to hack the servers. Also, uh, from here, it can get some users' uh, information, okay, from ISP. From here, they can access the data, okay, useful data for the business. And in the same manner, they can go and access the server of the other company, okay, maybe the larger company. And uh, in the same way, they can go and access the ISP of another corporate. So this is a typical scenario that happens usually always in the network. And such kind of attacks, Okay, are well inside uh, denial of service attacks. Okay, so the main focus is on the network attack. Okay, so the attacks based on our networks. So, oh, I don't have any information about the marks of exam. I will ask your teacher. Uh, okay, let's move on. Okay. To the next slide. So denial of service DOS attack. Okay, is uh, by definition is okay. It is an attempt to compromise to okay do to control the availability of by hindering or blocking completely. Okay. Uh, the provision of some services. So every time uh, the DOS attack will try to get 
such kind of okay uh, provision or some services to hack okay so always the attacker want to hack all those okay services and uh, useful information related to the uh, server itself. Okay. Uh, the attack attack exhaust some critical resources okay so resources could be hardware or software okay all these we will study like okay next one and even the network resources as well the, like routers switches and so on so this is okay a typical uh, hacking scenario let's move to the next one okay the nature of denial of service attacks so the nature is such a way that uh, it is a, a form of attack on the availability okay of the of some services which is available to the users only but by somehow some other some tools and techniques okay used by the attackers to get all those okay availability possible for him or her okay so in the context of computer and communication security uh, we mainly focus on network services okay this is main main idea okay so uh, the definition this is another definition okay uh, related to DOS okay? it is an action okay? it is an action that prevents uh, or impairs the author, author, uh, authorized use of networks okay systems applications so it is an action to prevent or impairs uh, authorized use of networks systems and application so it will track all those networks system and application to get in control rather than let it control by the attackers okay so this is our main prime action that we do okay but uh, dos attack will try to do okay just reverse thing it is an action that prevents okay? that will stop the legal user to uh, to use the network to use the system or to use the applications by exhausting okay resources such as cpu okay uh, these are the hardwares we are talking about cpu memory bandwidth okay and also the disk space the main memory okay so uh, there are three main categories of resources that are attacked mainly by the attackers the number number one is as i told you earlier is a network the second one is system and the third one is application so network bandwidth system resources and application resources are the three prime okay resources that are attacked okay let's move to the next one uh, this is an, an, an example of poison packet attack, okay? So the poison packet, packet uh, attacks are another form of system resource, okay? This is just another form of system resource attack, uh, which uses packets. So every time it, it will take some packet, okay? And it will, that packet will trigger, it will initiate, it will start some bug inside the systems uh, network okay using so most of the computer networks are handled by the software itself so uh, okay let's tell you something for example the firewall okay so if you have a firewall in the network that's okay but uh, usually people think that the firewall is a hardware it's okay we have the hardware device which is called firewall in big corporate network that's okay but also together with the hardware we have the software component as well so the firewall okay an example of network device do have not just the hardware but the software as well so the attacker will try to okay uh, hack the software by going and sending the packages okay some uh, 
kind of malicious packages that will hurt the software and it will okay put the bug inside some kind of malfunctioning of the software okay bug inside the software and that software will start okay to decrease its uh, uh, availability and finally it will crash it will it will just no longer be available to handle the situation okay so for that reason uh, it will no longer be able to communicate so in that scenario okay uh, the, the attacker has completely the firewall because it has destroyed the software which is used to control the firewall and it has already destroyed okay, the hardware itself so finally uh, whenever the softwares are reloaded restarted because of the crash of the system it will generate okay by re rebooting the system uh, some kind of okay uh, hacking possibilities so it is good time for attacker to get into the uh, network so this is an example normally we have this situation uh, th let's say this is the internet okay that's okay and there's uh, some gateway like routers okay that's okay uh, uh, the firewall has been replaced by another example gateway routers uh, the same thing can happen to the routers like firewalls and also uh, there are uh, some other hardware devices network hardware uh, hub and switches and this is the legal user inside the some corporate that's okay so usually the user will use the hub and switches and the routers to get into the network internet okay? so uh, this is the common way but whenever the attacker attacks it first destroys the hardware and existing software which are used to control the hardware and by doing so it can attack the user's computer and also uh, in between the existing hardware devices which are run on the basis of controlling software okay so uh, this is how the attacks are done in this case and and this is known as okay, poison packets attack because the, all the scenario of attack starts with the creation of the packets the some kind of malicious packet sending the some of the malicious packets to the network and then finally creating bugs inside the system and crashing the system itself okay so all these three are the possibilities one two three okay, uh, okay so this is the poison packet scenario that's okay in the classical okay denial of services attack we have okay a flooding of attack flooding uh, so this is also considered as flooding attack okay the simplest example is of the dos is flooding attack. so here i'm giving you an example see here uh, let's say this is the user and initially it is not in wrong position that's okay it was working fine that's okay at the before the beginning but um, after the attacks let's say by the attacker okay it pretend that it has many computers okay and also at the same time uh, or maybe it has many computer itself okay let's say the attackers have uh, five computers and they are sending a pool of packets okay and by bombarding by sending a lot of packages inside the network of the user okay let's say it is connected with some network together so by sending such a large amount of packages inside the network of the user the user okay, uh, gets problems and this is the time for attacker to hack the system itself so the simplest classic okay dos uh, is an example of flooding attack okay and the aim of the of attacker is to overwhelm means sending a lot of packages uh, by so why sending such a large packages because it want to crash the network capacity 
to send and receive the packages. Every network has certain limit to receive and send the packages. If the limit increases, the network in, in the danger zone, okay? So the danger zone is created by the attacker by overwhelming, increasing uh, more than limit, okay, uh, of receiving the packages, capacity of the network. And by doing so, it, it tried to destroy okay, the network or sometimes it, it is able to get into the network. So this is an example of okay, flooding attack. And this is a classical denial of service attack as well. So, okay, so far so good. I think, uh, is there anything else you want to ask me at this moment? Is it okay? So, okay, let's move to the next slide, okay, this one. Uh, there's another, okay, attack, which is known as source address spoofing. Uh, also, it is sometimes referred to as IP address spoofing, okay, because the reason is uh, the attack is mainly on the IP address. So, that's why it is also called IP address spoofing. Here's a simple example scenario. Okay. As you can see here, okay, we have a small okay, network okay, consisting of, uh, let's say uh, this is the server and this is the user. This is a complete client server interaction. Okay, this is, so every time, okay, like this, every time the client is sending some for me uh, asking something to the server and server is going to reply in the same manner okay so this is a close relation between client and server okay computers that's okay but during the time of attack okay let's say the attacker is here it will try to send okay some kind of uh, spoofing okay so it is something like this it will send to the server okay uh, by pretending okay just that it is the main user not the attacker okay it is just pretending so uh, uh, it is uh, it is hiding its own identity and telling the server that i am the user so uh, actually it should be user not the victim okay that's okay but the, it is just telling identity about the user itself to the server just by okay, uh, by fooling the server okay so by doing so okay uh, uh, if the server okay got confused and he accepts okay you are the real one then it will reply to the attacker with some useful information that's that's the way but at the same time okay the server will deny okay to the victim so uh, sometimes it it will say uh, because uh, most of the time okay the user gets connected with the server earlier but it will not because now the server has okay uh, has been controlled by the entire attacker system, attacking systems okay it is controlled by the system itself so there will be such kind of chaos in this scenario so source address is proofing it is pretending that i am the real address of the user okay and i want this data that data okay so uh, the address is spoofed okay it is just pretended it is just okay uh, falsely okay claimed by the attackers that i am the real address so okay uh, it uses okay uh, uh, use of forge source okay as I told you just now uh, forge source address is the main idea inside so with the given okay sufficiently privileged access to the network handling code uh, it is easy to create packets 
with the uh, forge source okay, address, the same thing. And uh, at the same time, uh, any other attributes, you can get it that is desired by the user, uh, I mean the attackers. So attackers can do anything at this moment after attacking and finally getting the complete hold of the server. So, okay, this is a very common, very easy scenario. Let's move to the next one. So, okay, uh, this is uh, uh, just a pictorial representation, okay? How does it happen? So, uh, the same thing here, okay? We have, uh, let's say, uh, the source, okay? Um, okay, actually, I should say, start from here. This is the server, okay? And server needs some kind of address proof that, okay, this is the real user which has this address. So, uh, the server knows, okay, only the address 172.15.1.6, uh, okay? This is the address, which is IP address, which is recorded inside the server, okay, database. So every time the server will check, okay, this address, IP address, okay? So well, the real user, okay, have uh, such IP address and destination IP address, which is the server address, this one. Okay, that's okay. So uh, the thing is, okay, uh, 172.15.1.6 is the real address, okay, which is recorded inside the server. But okay, uh, this host, okay, is trying to get all the information because he is the real address, okay. The, this is the user, okay, is trying to get into the server using the same address, 172.15.1.6, okay, that's okay. But later the attacker came in and he just, he has different address. So every time, whenever he tries to get into the server, it gets, okay, denial that uh, no, we cannot, you can, you're not allowed inside. So for that reason, he just pretend is proof okay using force okay, tools and techniques okay using some tools and techniques he falsify the source ip as not 172.14.0.5 but he pretend real address or he has the real address of 172.15.1.6 the same address and thereafter the denial has been rejected and acceptance is granted. So by doing so, uh, it can access all the data, okay, which is available to the real user, this one, okay? So this is how it works, like this way. Okay, let's move to the next one. Okay. So sync, okay, S, Y, and sync, spoofing. In this one, okay, uh, this, here's the example. That's okay, I will show. So here's the example that, let's say, uh, the attacker client, okay, uh, pretended client is here. So in this attack, okay, uh, the attacker will send some SYN send, okay, uh, messages, okay, a kind of spoofing packages, whatever you can understand, okay. So along with the basic flooding attack, the other common classic source attack is same spoofing in okay, this one. And this attack, this attacks the ability of the network server. Okay. So mainly uh, one server. So this attacks the ability of a network server to respond to TCP connection okay, request by overflowing the tables used to manage such connections. So every server has some kind of table that is used to manage uh, all the traffic okay, and protocol, TCP, like this one. So it will send SYN, okay, with spoof okay, source, okay, let's see this one, 
So it will send first. Then uh, this server will send okay uh, this uh, acknowledgement okay, that I guess I received your message your S Y N okay, and it will send acknowledgement to the pretended server, which is a part of attacker itself. Okay, so every time the attacker okay is trying to pretend that okay this is our okay, S Y N and then okay the sender will acknowledge uh, the server will acknowledge by sending the client okay which is a part of attacker so they are together uh, so the spoof client okay so they will okay uh, the server will send to the spoof client and syn attack uh, acknowledgement okay to uh, to non-existent client, okay, this uh, discards. So in this case, okay, uh, the message, okay, is just gone through and uh, acknowledgement to the non-existent client, okay, is discarded. Thereafter, okay, uh, it will send again, okay, uh, the same thing, okay, same and same and so on. Uh, why? Because uh, resend okay the process is started here and it will send and then resend every time whenever the attacker is trying to get into it will resend okay uh, s y and attack after some time okay uh, after timeout okay and uh, after sending so many acknowledgements all the time see it will okay be assumed as failed so finally, it will crash the server connectivity. Okay. So assume failed connection request. So this is another kind of tag that is called SYN sin spoof spoofing. Uh, in this one, okay, uh, uh, the future connections, okay, future connection request from uh, legitimate user. So let's say after that. A genuine user comes in and he wants to access the computer server, okay, but he will be denied because uh, it has failed already, okay, in that case. So this is here. The, this means future connection request from a legal user, okay, failed, denying them access to the server. It is thus an attack on system resources, okay. So that's all about this one. Right. So this is another kind of spoofing attack. Okay, let's move to the next one, flooding attack. So in the flooding attack, okay, uh, here's the scenario. I, I'm giving you. Um, so even before, okay, let's see what is there inside. Flooding attacks, okay. Uh, flooding attacks takes a variety of form, a number of okay forms, based on okay which network per Calls, okay, is being used. Network protocol is being used to implement the attack. So here, the network protocol is used to implement attack. Okay. So in all cases, the intent is to overload the network capacity. Okay. And it may uh, additionally, okay, alternatively also aim to overload server's ability to handle and respond to the traffic. Almost a similar attack as earlier I told you. So here, okay, uh, the thing is like this. TCP sync flooding attack. Here's the client and here's the server, okay. So uh, every time the client will send, okay, the same thing actually, S-Y-N. Okay? Then uh, the acknowledgement uh, you can think this as okay any kind of interaction of the client to the server that I am logging in the server that's okay so server will ask some kind of password or something okay so or maybe it is uh, sometimes it is called three three way of handshake okay uh, so here okay, the first thing is the client will try to uh, access the server okay that is step one then the acknowledgement will be sent to the client from the server that 
yes i acknowledge okay that's okay i know you i acknowledge you okay i understand you that's okay but uh, after the attack okay the client is not able to send okay any further communication mass communication messages or packets to the server okay so in the third step after the attack it will not be able to send anything to the server never send because in the middle okay uh, it has been okay tracked by the attacker one possibility the other possibility is it has been uh, uh, flooding uh, it has been sync spoofing spoofed so we will not get anything further okay there is no interaction further in this case okay uh, the next thing is defenses against denial of service attack so how to defend such kind of attacks so uh, there are a number of steps that can be utilized can be uh, used to limit the consequences of being the target for the attacks or to limit the chances of the system user system being compromised being in control okay. uh, so before that okay uh, let's talk about distributed denial of services okay so actually what happens in the distributed denial of services like this one uh, let's say we have an attacker here, right? Uh, I'm talking about distributed denial of service attacks. Okay? So here, okay, the attacker is trying to hack the user system, okay, the target. So what it does at the first moment, okay, it will create some kind of uh, handler zombie. Uh, zombies are actually the some of the okay, attractive words, but they are really the computers or computerized machines, okay? zombies. So zombies are just computers okay, of attackers. So handler zombie, okay? So attacker will do one thing because it is not able to uh, attack the target just by one computer. So it will create a series of okay, computers to attack on the user okay because a single computer cannot hack the single uh, user so to make it more complex more difficult it will create a, an army of uh, a series of a, uh, a bunch of or a set of all these machines that are called zombies so these are the agent zombies and that are handled at first by the handler zombie so attacker will okay uh, manage the things through the handle handler zombie so every time uh, it is also possible that may handle okay some of the computer that's okay directly but mainly okay it will handle the zombies by handler zombie so it will create a proxy handler zombie okay and the handler zombie will create the army of all those computers all those machines that are constantly constantly uh, attacking on the user computers okay all the time so the agent zombies are responsible for such kind of distributed denial of services because attack is not just one at one point okay from one point it is distributed okay with many sources so attack is coming from many sources and it is just like it distributed so that's why it is called distributed denial of service not just a single one okay it is a collection of many computers zombies so the thing, the thing is here, okay, the same thing here. Let's uh, erase this one, that's okay. So, okay, uh, here we have, okay, uh, against denial of service. So we were talking about that distributed, that's okay. So distributed, okay, denial of services, 
uh, here's the a little bit information about this one the incoming traffic flooding the victim okay as I shown you or it needs from many different sources so these different sources are called zombies okay and this effectively makes it impossible to stop the attack because the attack is not coming from okay single source so simply uh, by blocking a single source the problem cannot be solved okay in this distributed one if it is just simply dos distributed denial of service uh, deny uh, uh, that is denial of services okay? dos okay if it is dos then it will be there will be one single resource of attack okay to the user so attacker and user are interacted with this in this scenario dos by using single attack single point attack so we can just block this uh, point and we can have other networks running that's okay but in the case of okay distributed one we have many points of attack okay all these are okay to the pointing to the user okay so in this case if we block only one point but still we will have another points open okay so we will be able to stop it when we block every point but it is not possible actually okay okay so uh, this is all about okay defenses against denial of services uh, let's see uh, what else we can do in this uh, kind of scenario of attacks so this is the next slide so in general cases okay there are four lines of defense so uh, we can think it as uh, first line of defense four lines of defense against DOS or DDoS so the first one is attack prevention and preemption so this is the strategy attack prevention and preemption so this is done before the attack before the starting of the attack we do like this that in this mechanism okay uh, mechanisms enable the victim to endure attack attempts okay, without denying services so in this scenario okay we are just expecting that we are okay uh, just attempting to uh, stop the denial of services to the legitimate client so we are ensuring that our security system is perfect and we are 100% risk free of such kind of attack because we have very strong okay, net, uh, network security that's okay so attempt uh, attack prevention and preemption before the attack the second one is uh, attack detection and filter uh, during the attack so let's say the attacker has tried some has already got some loop loophole inside the network system security system and it get it tries to get into or just now okay it has almost in very close to the attacking point so at that moment uh, the, the defense system okay attack uh, de the defense system security system will detect okay and filter out okay uh, try to find out where is the problem so in this okay mechanism so these mechanisms okay attempt to detect the attack first it will try to identify the attacker the attacking point and uh, as it begins and the spawn okay immediately and after finding out the source of the attack it will try to block that source it will try to uh, remove that source okay this is another one so this minimizes or mitigate the risk of impact okay within our network or minimizes the impact of the attack this is the second the third one is okay uh, attack source okay trespass and identification okay something like this so almost uh, the same okay but a little different that's okay so during and after the attack 
this strategy is done during the attack and after the attack. So this is the, an attempt to identify the source of the attack, okay? As earlier, this is okay. Uh, as a first step in preventing future attack, okay? This is the, so identification, as I told you earlier, is the main target. And then, okay, uh, prevent uh, by blocking that uh, source, right? So uh, these are actually two and three are very close, okay, to in mechanisms. Okay, the number four is like this, okay, attack reaction. But pay attention within two and three, what is the difference? The difference is during the attack, we can employ this kind of mechanism, number two. But uh, number three is applicable not just during the attack but also after the attack, okay? So this is the difference between these two. Number four is, okay, such a way that attack reaction, okay, attack reaction, uh, let's say the system was attacked already and the crash has happened. The attacker has destroyed the complete system itself or maybe more than 50%. 70% or 80%, that's okay. So after the attack, uh, uh, there should be an attempt attempt to eliminate, okay, remove or curtail, okay, the same thing, uh, the effects of attack. Let's say the attacker has entered into the system and destroyed more than 60% of the, of the security system and get into the our database system as well and corrupted all the databases, um, maybe nearly, okay, just let's say it has corrupted more than 70% databases, okay, it has modified most of the data databases. So to eliminate such kind of problem situation, we need to, okay, uh, first, okay, uh, back up the data, okay, so beforehand it is the responsibility of database administration, administrators and um, database professionals to handle beforehand the situation like backing up the data. So they need to recover the data after the attack because uh, existing data has been corrupted in the system. So they need the copies of backup that they can replace the existing data from the attack data, okay? So existing data will be replaced by the backed up data. And if you have backed up in the entire database, it will be the best thing and it will be recovered in that case. So all these things are there okay, inside after the attack. So, uh, so these are some of the conditions, scenarios, situations that I discussed with you. Okay, so uh, let's move to the next one. Uh, this is another example, okay. uh, almost the same thing, okay. actually, I should say. So just wait a second, I will just try to remove some of the things if I can, that's okay. So here, okay, uh, let's say uh, the target is here, okay, the target machine, okay, and uh, I mean the main database or maybe some kind of other server, right, and uh, here is the attacker's data, uh, packages, okay, bad traffic. But at the same time, there are some good users, okay, which are sending some da data at the same time. So the attack will, okay, uh, the prevention system, okay, which is here, right, uh, will do some kind of strategies like this, attack pattern detection, okay. So it will uh, identify the attack that there's some bad traffic is going on inside, okay and it will recognize the pattern, okay? And after identification of pattern, okay, it will identify the real, okay, attacker. This is one way. Another one is attacker database, okay, for rep uh, repetition threat, okay? This is another. Uh, so by doing so, okay, uh, it will move, actually I should say, after this, okay, it will come here, like this. So. By doing so, okay, after this one, 
the threat intelligence identification process begin. So uh, it will identify the threats of attackers, uh, intelligence, okay, uh, some kind of uh, tools and techniques employed by the attackers, which will be identified, okay, by this step. And after, okay, attacker database is separated for uh, repetition type okay so they are completely separated and blocked uh, also possibilities uh, other things are apply okay? predefined policies so we must have some existing policies predefined means uh, for the security of the entire network uh, infrastructure of the company or complete corporate okay we must have some security policies beforehand not after the attack it is better to okay uh, apply those policies before not after so we must have some security policies before so to handle such kind of situation so apply predefined policies which was completely okay reversed by the attacker okay in case of attack so we have to remove the, all those okay bad elements and put the original one, real one, okay, in our put in place the the original one, okay. That's the main idea. And by doing the main idea here is security policies. So we must have a good security policy for our entire corporate. The second thing is, okay, we must have, have some IDS, intrusion detection system. So if we want to have a complete protected system, we must have some intrusion detection systems itself. And uh, sometimes also it is also useful to have automated IDPS intrusion detection and prevention prevention system okay so every time intruder, intruders are detected okay and prevented at the same time okay uh, a prevented uh, uh, system at the same time right 